Hey guys, I'm Alastair from Trail and Kale, and this is Yon Cloud Vista 2. Yon Cloud Vista 2 is an all-mountain trail running shoe designed for technical terrain and to be able to run fast over shortish distances. So I would say up to around half marathon. And that's because it provides a fairly firm but very responsive ride. It has got some big improvements on the previous version, which I did like, but there were some issues that meant that I didn't really continue running in that shoe but those issues have been fixed with the Cloud Vista 2. Straight into the key specifications then. I'm not here to waste your time. They cost $150. I'll let you know by the end of this review if they're worth that price tag. How do they fit and how do they feel? Well, they're true to size and they have a medium width. The upper is using an engineered mesh. It's almost like a ripstop material. It's actually very smooth on the inside. You wouldn't expect that from a scratchy sound like that. It actually looks a bit like a ripstop material. But it is dual layer, so the material on the inside that touches the top of your feet or toes isn't actually this material. It's something a bit softer, a bit more knit. The midsole is using Helion Super Foam and CloudTech pods. Now, On's website says this is a plush midsole. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's not plush. It is more balanced and responsive than plush. I'll go into that in more detail in my performance review. The outsole is using On's proprietary Mission Grip rubber compound. They weigh 10.2 ounces or 289 grams for a size US men's nine. That's my pair. And they have a medium drop of six millimeters from heel to toe. The stack height is a little bit higher than the previous version. Not really noticeable to be honest, but I guess it does give you more protection underfoot from sharp rocks and things like that on the trails. And they offer neutral support. More on how they feel then. So like I said before, they are true to size. Go the usual size. If you're familiar with Ons, then usual size, but also very consistent with other brands. Now there is a fair amount of roominess in the shoe, or should I say volume. So if you have voluminous feet, then that's good for you because they will kind of stretch around a larger foot. That's not to say they're wide, they're just voluminous. If you're a runner who has voluminous feet, then you'll know, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, these shoes will fit your feet nicely. The tongue on the inside is fully gusseted, which means it's kind of attached to the top of the midsole inside the shoe. And that means there's no kind of rubbing within the shoe or any rubbing points. So you won't be getting any blisters there. Feels very comfortable and soft. It also keeps the tongue in place. Speaking of the tongue, it is quite rigid, almost like a piece of cardboard. Bit odd um, because it is quite thin, but yet still rigid with not a huge amount of padding. Anyway, that does break in over time. So it's not something that causes discomfort or anything like that. Just something I should point out. And then they're very comfortable around the collars and the heel counter here. Nice and soft, plenty of plushness there. Generally very comfortable shoe overall. If you're enjoying this review, please give it a like, share it with a friend, and subscribe to this channel for more running shoe reviews and running shoe roundups just like this one. Bang, straight into my performance review. I'm gonna start with what's good about these shoes. The first thing then is the improved support or midfoot support and lock-in. This was the thing I didn't like about the previous version. Every time I went down a really steep technical decline, my feet, would slam right down the front of the shoe and my toes would be smashing the front of the reinforced toe bumper of the front of the shoe. And that was hugely painful. Really didn't enjoy going downhill in those shoes. And that wasn't because the shoes didn't fit properly. That was because the upper did not have a good foot lock. So on as I guess, maybe they were listening to my review, but they've solved this issue. They put this midfoot support system here in the upper. That's these little sections on either side that the laces go through, creating a tighter fit in the midfoot. 
And what that does is stop your feet slipping to the front of the shoes. So huge improvements there. And I'm really enjoying running downhill in these shoes. That brings me on to the Mission Grip outsole. It feels more aggressive than the previous version. And actually, I've had a lot more confidence going down steep technical downhills. And I attribute that to the Mission Grip outsole and new traction pattern. I also really like the Helion Superfoam responsive ride on these shoes. Now, if you do run on your forefoot, there's not a huge amount of stack height in this region. So these will feel more responsive or firm for you guys. So you might not enjoy running super long distances in these shoes if you do run on your forefoot. That said, if you run more towards the midfoot or the heel, there's a lot more cushioning. These Cloudtech pods do compress a lot better in that area, giving you more cushioning on your landing. That said, it has a really snappy ride because of the speedboard in the midsole and it's kind of pronged, giving you extra flexibility, but also some support in the lateral. And basically what that does is give you more energy return. So you're gonna notice that on gradual downhills, uh, especially on flat sections where you wanna pick up the speed, that plate will just give you so much more propulsion than not having one. But also I've noticed it helps with gradual climbs too. So it does kind of dig in and it kind of does give you a little bit of extra push when you're going up the hill. So the midsole is fantastic. Just be aware if you are running more than half marathon distance in these shoes, I feel like you might start to feel that firmness over time. And then finally, when it comes to climbing performance, that extra room in the toe box area is really great because it gives your toes a little bit extra space to splay. And what that does is give you more stability, but also extra power when you're trying to climb up the hill. But also letting your toes splay out like that is natural biomechanics. So over longer distances, your feet are actually gonna feel a lot better if they're able to move about within the shoe somewhat. And the upper is quite breathable as well. So if you are doing quite intense climbs at a high pace or high intensity level, then they regulate temperature pretty well. When it comes to things that are not so good, well, I kind of mentioned this before because it's a bit of a double-edged sword. And that is the fact that it is a firm midsole. It's not plush by any means. So if you don't like running in a firm shoe, these might not be for you. But every cloud has a silver lining. So with that responsiveness or firmness, you do get good control on the trails. And that allows you to feel the trails beneath you and actually dynamically change your style and react to what's coming very quickly down the trail. So a responsive shoe like this is good if you enjoy technical trails. And then finally, the only other thing that could be improved is heel lock. Now, I did feel my heel slipping out of this on very steep climbs just a little bit, not as bad as the previous version. And actually there is a fix. Just use the racer's loop heel lock method, which utilizes the final eyelet in the lacing system. If you don't have a clue what I just said, you don't know what racer's loop heel lock method is, definitely go watch that video. I do a really quick, easy demonstration of how you can use that final eyelet to get a much better heel lock on your running shoes. You've made it to my final verdict then. Are they worth $150? Well, yes, they're a huge improvement on the previous version. And these are really gonna be a good shoe for those who like a fast, responsive ride and a shoe that can handle technical terrain over shorter distances. So that's distances up to half marathon distance, I'd say. If that sounds like to you, then I'd definitely recommend checking these out. Hit the link in the description and that'll take you to the on running website where you can learn more about these and maybe even buy a pair. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this on Cloud Vista 2 review. I hope it gave you some insights onto whether it's a trail running shoe for you. It is a fantastic all mountain trail running shoe that is much better than the previous version. And um, so it's definitely got my approval. If you're still not sure if it's for you, maybe you've got specific circumstances for the types of runs you like to do. Let me know what those circumstances are in the comments and I'll make sure you get hooked up with the best running shoes for you. Well, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.